This video is going to look at um, some very important components known as uh, solenoid operated, <coughs> excuse me, solenoid operated directional control valves. So we've looked at numerous directional control valves, but here we can see they are going to be solenoid operated. So we've got the solenoid symbols. That's the the big black things here for this particular component, and um, they are the solenoids which allow, um, which are operated electronically, um, or electrically, sorry. So that allows for um, the electro-pneumatic operation. So the bridge between um, the electronics or the electrical and the pneumatics is done through the solenoid. So we've a, we've a pneumatic valve, and then it's getting operated and retracted by an electrical signal. Here's another variation. Here's the solenoid here in white but again pneumatic valve and it doesn't have to be solenoid operated on both sides here we've got a spring return one and just solenoid operated on one side okay so um, we're not going through the diagrams in any great detail we'll just look at how it operates um, and some important things to keep in mind when using these uh, electro pneumatic devices all I have got set up is I still have my power supply and um, I've got that I'm going to bridge that into my switch box because we're going to use some switches to operate the solenoids. Um, and then I've got air supply coming in and I just have it piped up um, with a normal pneumatic circuit. You'll see um, I've got my 5-2 valve here, I've got primary air supply and then going into our double acting cylinder. For my 3-2 valve, again, air supply coming in and then one of my outputs into my single acting cylinder. Okay. Um, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to use one uh, push button to extend the double acting cylinder and one to retract it um, when we're using the 5-2. And what we'll actually do is we'll start with the 3-2 and we'll just use um, this detent push button to operate it and then to retract it. So how does this work? Well, we follow the, the wiring diagrams how we ha as we have had previously. So we bring 24 volts um, down into one of our switches, to the top of one of our switches. And then on the output of our switch, we're going to take that um, the whole way down. And we might need to just extend our wire ever so slightly. Um, so we just, we can plug in, sorry, we can plug in on the top of that. that in so we can extend it down to the top. Okay, now solenoids aren't polarized. Okay, these solenoids aren't polarized. So I just tend to do... Um, you can go in on the top or the bottom, um, but I tend to just keep 24 at the top and then uh, or watch it, or zero supply on the bottom. So that's just the way I go about it. Um, you know, you could have it the opposite way around, but red in the top, blue in the bottom, it matches kind of what we do up here. And then that's going to go into ground. So we've got a closed loop going on at the moment. 24 going in. Um, we're waiting for the connection at the switch and then it will come down into our solenoid and then out into our zero okay and what's also great about these solenoids we have a little LED on it that will light up when we get power so because we're dealing with um, we've got uh, electrical power and then we have pneumatics if the circuit isn't working there could be a problem either with the pneumatics or with the um, electro stuff so the LED at least lets us know if that turns on, well then we've got power, the solenoid is operating and there may be a problem with our piping um, with the pneumatics. Okay, so it's good for fault finding as well, them little lights. So let's see what happens. Um, we turn on our switch and you will see the light has come on the solenoid. Our valve, our 3 valve is now activated and we can see the single action cylinder has extended. If I operate the switch again, you will see that our cylinder has retracted um, and the spring has mechanically operated our valve to go back to home because this is a solenoid operated on one side. Okay, so we can watch that again. Um, sorry, the noise from the air. That's it out. Operate again, it's back. So all I'm doing is just operating the switch and then when I operate it again, it will release it back. And um, because that is a detent switch that we're using up here at the top, that's why you have to operate it twice.